Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add a Divi email opt-in to your Gutenberg blog post. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so um, the first thing we need to do here is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to Pages, click on Add New. Now, we can call this page whatever we want. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to call this opt-in. Next, I'm going to come over here and just click on Use Default Editor. So this now takes us into the Gutenberg Editor. So I'm just going to add a bunch of uh, text in here like that. And then in between here is where we're going to add our email opt-in. Right, so what we're going to do here is to add the uh, Divi block. And to do that, we can just uh, search for it by adding a forward slash. And now you can see here we have DV layout. So just click on Divi layout. So for this design, we're going to build everything from uh, scratch. So I'm going to click here on build new layout. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. So with that selected now, I'm going to click here on build from scratch. And let's start by styling section of this design. So I'm going to click here on section settings. And then the first thing we need to do here is to go in and add a background. So the colors I'm going to use throughout this tutorial, I'm going to link them in the video description below. All right, so here I'm going to click on background and this time we need a gradient. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and add my first color. So I'm going to paste that and then I'm also going to paste my second color. So I'm going to click here and paste my color here as well. So moving on, let's head over now to the design tab. So this is where we need to go into our dividers and we're going to be adding our top and bottom dividers. So let's start by choosing our style. So I'm going to click on this drop down. I'm going to come all the way down here and uh, choose my style. And the one we're going to go with is, let's have a look. Okay, so let's go with this one here. So I'm going to select it. Next, we're going to add our divider color. So I'm going to paste it in here. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors I'm using, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So the next thing we need to do is to uh, set our divider horizontal repeat, and we're going to set this to 1.8x. Okay. So next, we are also going to add our bottom divider. So to add it, we're going to click on the bottom tab, click here on none. And this will show us all our divider patterns. So the one we're going to go with is this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Next, we're going to add our color. And we're also going to add our horizontal repeats. And it's going to be the same as the top one at 0.8. And then we're just going to flip this horizontal and flip it vertical as well. All right. So now that we have all that in place, the next step is to add some rounded corners to this section. So I'm going to scroll down here until I find a border. So here on border, I'm just going to add 20 pixels. But notice that I have my chain activated there. The chain is going to allow us to give our borders the same value pretty much all around. So notice that when I change it to say 30, that gets applied across because my chain is activated. All right. So now that we have that all in place, we're also going to need to add a border width. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is going to be set at two pixels. And for this to look great, we also need to change the color. So I'm going to paste my color in here. And pretty much we're very close to finalizing our design. So the next, the last step here on the section design is to head all the way down here to animation. And uh, we're going to choose flip. And this is where you can choose uh, to flip center, down, up, and so on. So I'm going to use down for this one here and then save. Next, we're going to add our rows. So I'm going to start by adding my single row. And in this, in fact, before we go into the rows, we need to add all our settings here. So I'm going to click on this gear icon to adjust my row settings. So with that selected now, uh, the next step is to just pretty much make sure that my width is set to 100%. So I'm going to come over here to design, spacing, and I'm going to set my width to 100%. Do the same on maximum width. Okay, so now that I have those two things uh, all set, it's time now to add our email opt-in. So I'm going to save this, click on this plus button, and uh, let's add our email opt-in. I'm just going to type in a few letters here, and here we go. This is our email opt-in. I'm going to select that. So with this now, uh, you can add whatever text you need for the title. So for this, I'm just going to go in and just add this text. And I'm just going to leave the dummy text as it is as well, because really, to be honest, uh, this is meant for you to add your own text on there. Right. So now that I have that all set, the next step now is to come over here to email accounts. And this is where you need to add 
your email autoresponder. And there's quite a lot to choose from. So we have ConvertKit, uh, Aweber, Campaign Monitor, and so on. So once you've chosen uh, that, you need to come over here, select your list, click on Add. Now this will synchronize with your email autoresponder. Now once this synchronizes, this is what's going to show all these fields. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to come over here to Field. And I'm just going to activate Use Single Name Field. Go ahead and select that. And now you can see this is dropped to name and email address. Okay, so now that we have all that set, the next step now is to design our email opt-in. So I'm going to start by going to my fields background color. So I'm going to click here on design fields. And let's start with our fields background color. I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool and paste my color like that. Now the fields color is going to be white. So I'm going to come over here and set this to white. Now for the text, I am going to use a font called IBM Plex Sans. So let's scroll down here. And this font, by the way, is free. So you can go ahead and use it. It's a Google font. All right, so I'm going to select it here, IBM Plex. Great. And moving on, I need to also set my field text size. So I'm going to scroll down here. By default, it's set to 14, and I want this at 18. Now let's head over and uh, add our letter spacing. We need to set this to 2, and then we need to set our line height to 2. Okay, so that's looking great so far. Now the next step is to come over here to the layout and this is where you can decide where you want to have these fields. You can either have them on the right or on the left, but for this design, let's have them on the left. So there we go. So now we have our form on the left. So, okay, moving on, let's make some adjustments here to our text. Let's start here with the title. So I'm gonna click on this brush tool and that's gonna take us to a title font. So let's change this to IBM Plex Sans. Next, we are going to set our weight to semi-bold, our text color to white. So um, in fact, let me go to my recently used colors here and set my color. And then our title text size, we're going to make this huge, set this to about 60. And while we add it, we're going to come over here to this little icon and set our size for the tablet to 30 pixels. And the same applies for the phone as well. Okay, so now that we have uh, all that set, let's just make a few adjustments on my line height here and set it at 1.2. And then moving on, the next step is to work on the button. So as you can see here, in fact, you know what? Before we go to the button, this background here is distracting me. Let's go ahead and get rid of this background here. So I'm gonna go back to the content, click on background, and there's two ways to do this. You can either click here where it says use background color, or you can just set it to, to transparent here. So I'm going to click on use background color, set this to no, and I'm going to go back in and start working on my button. So I'm going to click on this brush tool. Now, this is where now we are going to start by setting our text color. So before we do that, we need to activate use custom styles for button. And for our text color, we are going to set it to this color right here. And just as a quick reminder, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that I have my color, I'm going to come over here to the background and we need to add a gradient here. So we're going to click on the gradient tab from this plus button and add our first color. So I'm going to paste it in here and my second color is going to be white and I know I've used white before, so I'm going to click here and go to my recent colors. Choose white, and then next I want to set my gradient direction to 90 degrees. And then for our end position, I'm going to set this to 34. Next, I'm going to come over here to button border width. And for my button border width here, it looks great at zero. And we're also going to make it bigger. So now... Uh, it's time to set our fonts. So I'm going to click here on the default and set this to IBM. And then for the font weight, we're going to set this to bold. And then I'm also going to make it all caps. Right, so while we're here now, as you can see, our button here doesn't look that big. So in order for us to do that, we need to add some padding. So I'm going to come all the way down here until I find my button padding and... I'm just going to add 15 both to the top and the bottom. And now you can see our button has become much bigger. And as you can see here, all our text goes all the way to the edge. And this is not good design. So to 
add some padding, we need to come all the way down here, click on padding, and let's set our padding to 5%. Uh, in fact, this needs to go to the left and the right. So I'm going to paste it in here, activate my chain since we're adding the same value. And as you can see now, we have equal padding. So I'm going to save this. And then I am going to save this page one more time. And then let's exit the Visual Builder. Okay. So while we're here, you can see that our page layout doesn't look great because it has a sidebar. So to change that, you can just come over here on Page Layout and then just choose No Sidebar. And then finally, we're going to hit Publish. Publish one more time. And then we can now view the page. So here's our final design with that animation. And as you can see, this is our email opt-in inside the um, Gutenberg editor. Now, right now you can see we don't have our email fields. That is because we need to be connected to our email autoresponder. So once you connect that, you're going to see the fields. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.